ready for the next witness? Or do you yes, want to we call uh, Mr. Depp. Okay. So just a reminder, you're still under oath, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, thank sir. You, Good morning, morning, Mr. Depp. Good morning. Um, we heard a lot about some statements that Mr. Waldman made. Do you remember that? Yes. And Mr. Waldman is your attorney or was your attorney? Yes. Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1245? And this is already in evidence, so permission to please yes. publish. If we could scroll down to the second page. Mr. Depp, do you see the statement here attributed to Mr. Waldman? Yes, I do. When's the first time that you saw this statement? Um. All right. Give it back up. Thank you. Mr. Depp, when is the first time that you saw this statement by Mr. Waldman? Um, the first time that I uh, ever saw this statement uh, was in August. Um, it was when the piece was the, the, the um, when she, August 2020, when I was countersued by Ms. Heard. This is the first time that I saw any of these uh, statements. Can we please pull up defendant's, defendant's exhibit 1246? And this is also already in evidence. Right. Thank you. We could scroll down to the second page or the th third, perhaps. Thank you. Mr. Depp, do you see this statement that's attributed to Mr. Waldman here? I do. And when is the first time that you saw these statements? Uh, same, uh, when, the, when the countersuit uh, was filed. And could we please go to Defense Exhibit 1247? And again, this is already in evidence. <clears throat> and if we could scroll down, please, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you see the statement attributed to Mr. Waldman? I do indeed, yes. And when's the first time that you saw this statement? The, 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 this is the same. It's uh, the uh, uh, counterclaim to August 2020. After you saw these statements for the first time, did you form an understanding as to where they appeared? I didn't, uh, as to where they had appeared, the statements. In what, in what publication? Um, no, off the bat, I, I didn't know exactly. 
Um, it, it just seemed like a lot of word salad to me. Uh, I, I didn't know where they'd come from or, I mean, where they ended up or... Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Hurd testifying that she, you did not assist her in getting her role in Aquaman? Uh, yes, I do, yes. And what is your response to that? Um, um, it's not, it's not, um, it's not exactly true. Do you know when Ms. Hurd first auditioned for Aquaman? Strangely, I know the date, and I really, well, no, I, yes, I do know the date, um, because um, uh, I was scheduled uh, with um, my band, the, uh, the, the the Hollywood Vampires. Uh, we had done two shows at the Roxy, which is a place in Los Angeles, to um, rehearse for a, uh, we were invited to play at the Rock and Reel um, concert, which is a huge rock and roll festival. So we did the two shows to go to Rio and play there. Um, Miss Herb, uh, I wanted to, wanted to uh, come with me, and uh, uh, Whitney, her sister, had come as well. Um, while we were there in Rio, we were rehearsing, getting ready for the show. Uh, Miss Hurd informed me that she would have to be going, she would have to get back to Los Angeles for an audition, meaning um, it's basically after our two-hour show or whatever, we, had to, we would have to get on the plane immediately to make it back to Los Angeles um, for this audition. And um, that audition was... Uh, uh, at Warner Brothers, it was uh, whatever film it was. And when were you performing at the Rock in Rio? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, that was the, tw I believe it was the 24th of September. In what year? Uh, that was 15. What do you understand happened after Miss Heard auditioned for Aquaman? Um... <clears throat> After after Ms. Hurd's uh, audition or possibly auditions uh, for Warner Brothers and uh, the, the, I suppose the creative team, um, Ms. Hurd ex expressed to me that the film was going to be Warner Brothers had said that the film was going to be shooting in Australia, and Australia was a for Ms. Hurd that was a potential problem which Jackson your honor we approach okay
I apologize, Mr. Duck. Could you please continue? What happened after Miss Heard auditioned for Aquaman? Uh, I was informed uh, by Miss Heard that the film was going to be um, shooting in Australia. And that, that was of um, concern to her. And because there, it was of concern um, to Warner Brothers. Um, so she asked if I would, because I, I, I'd had a, I'd had a, a multi, um, for, for a few years I'd had a multi-film uh, deal with, with Warner Brothers. And uh, so we'd been in business together. So I knew these people, I'd been in, I'd been on films with them. So I, she asked me if I would speak to them. I made a phone call and I, I spoke to... Uh, Objection hearsay, Your Honor. I, I don't believe he said anything. He, I think he was going to say who okay. he spoke to. All right, we'll, we'll see. Overruled at this point. Um, I spoke to three, um, the three upper echelon um, Disney executives, uh, excuse me, Warner executives, Kevin Sujihara, Sue Kroll, and uh, uh, Greg Silverstein. Um, and I told them Objection, that... Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. All right, I'll just take objection. Next question. Um, what was the result of you speaking with those individuals? Um, well, I... I, I, I um, I can only say that ultimately she did, she did get the job in the film. So hopefully, I, I, I suppose I had curbed their worries to some degree. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Heard testifying that she saw you consume eight to ten MDMA pills while you were at once while you were in Australia in um, March of two thousand fifteen? Yes, I do remember that. How many I also remember her saying that I took a handful. Objection beyond the scope. Question. Sorry, I just, that was extra residue. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. How many times have you done MDMA in your life, Mr. Depp? Uh, actually, not many, not that many times. I would say in my lifetime, maybe in my lifetime, MDMA. Six, seven, maybe. And how much MDMA have you done on those occasions? Uh, not enough to, um, not enough to uh, properly, well, not, not, not enough to properly, properly experience the, what the um, chemicals are supposed to do to you. Have you ever consumed eight to ten MDMA pills at once? No, ma'am. No, I have not. And why is that? Because um, I'd be dead. I'm pretty sure I'd be dead. Um, I think one would die, yes. It, and probably rather quickly. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you some pictures from the home in Australia that Ms. Heard testified about. Sure. Could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 1817, which is already in evidence? <clears throat> Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's depicted in this photograph? Uh, yes, I do. That's the, um, that's the downstairs bar um, of the house we rented in Australia. And can you please show the jury where you were sitting when Miss Heard threw um, the two vodka bottles at you? Um, if I touch this thing, it'll make a yes, mark. Yes, it will. Okay. So this chair, that one uh, here, was over here. Um, and it was in pretty much when I was 
turned around toward the, they were on swivels, so when I was turned around towards the bar, I'm facing the bar. When I turned around this way, the chair, this chair here was in uh, pretty much exactly the same position as this chair. It, it was when I was facing um, <clears throat> Miss Heard, who was, let's say she was, if you're looking at the photograph, she would be about here. Could you uh, draw a line in the direction where Miss Heard was relative yeah. to where you were sitting? Yes, absolutely. So if I'm sitting here, um, she was over here, like back here. Approximately how far away from Miss Heard, well, from you was Miss Heard, if you can recall? I would say I, I would say it was probably 10, 12, 15 feet, maybe 10 feet, 12 feet. And approximately where was your hand when the vodka bottle hit it? It was, um, it was leaning, my arm was, sorry, my, my arm was leaning on the, um, the marble bar, um, right there where that imaginary seat is, and uh, leaning, uh, kind of just leaning back and, and um, looking at Miss Heard, she just walked away with the, the second bottle. Uh, I mean, she, she walked this way when she threw the first bottle, which is uh, actually visible Can in you the please background circle on where the, the floor. First could you please circle where the first bottle oh, is? Oh, sorry, excuse me, yeah. All that is the um, exploded first bottle that, that went past my, <clears throat> that went past my head. And the second bottle um, hit right up here where my hand was resting on the, um, Marble bar. Can we please pull up defendant's exhibit 1820? Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's depicted in this photograph? This is behind that very bar. And what do you see on the floor in this picture? Um, I see what looks to me like a, a, a some kind of napkin. It looks uh, solid, soiled, blood, I don't know. And I see glass in the corner, blood obviously on the floor, and um, a towel leaning upon some cab something. Do you know how that bloody tissue got on the floor? Um, I, my best guess, um, Jackson calls for speculation. Uh, sustained. Okay. Do, I'm, you, do you know how the blood got on the floor, Mr. Depp? I'm pretty, well, I know how the blood got on the floor. It came from my dripping finger. So that's why the tissue um, is is uh, I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure since it is uh, looks like he's got blood on it as well is what what I um, held my finger uh, held held my finger uh, with. Do you see the wall to the on the left side of the photograph? I do. Was there a wall-mounted phone on that wall? On the left side of the photo? No, I didn't know. Uh, no. Not that I recall, no. Uh, could we please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 394, which is already in evidence? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Depp, do you recognize this text message? I, uh, I 
do. And what, what is this message? Um, it's a, it's a, a text to Dr. Kipper. Um, I'm, just, I'm sorry, just reading through. Yeah, this is um, this is uh, my text to the to to uh, Dr. Kipper, who who had just happened to be in town, um, telling him that uh, I've had it and um, that I just lost a finger a fingertip. How long after your finger had been injured did you send this text message, if you can recall? It's hard, it's hard to tell because when I look at the timestamp, it says delivered 3 7 2015, 5 o'clock. Um, but I know that because of Australia time, it was the 8th, and it was probably, this was. The whole thing lasted probably until about 2 p.m. Um, or so. When, when and that was when Kipper was called, Jerry was brought in. And Jerry Judge, sorry, excuse me. So do you have an estimate as to how long after your finger had actually been injured that you sent this message? I, I don't think it was very long. I think it was probably within the next, was it, no, I'm sure it was in the next half hour or so. Um, I would have had to sneak into a, a bathroom, and lock myself in to type this out. <clears throat> and how were you able to send this text message to Dr. Kipper in the state that you were in? Um, well, he, he wasn't available <laughs> at the time, so um, just to sort of thumb your way through, don't you? How long after sending this text message did you see Dr. Kipper? Um, I, I don't recall that I think it, it took them probably 30 minutes or more, 30, 30 to 40 minutes to get there. And what did Dr. Kipper do when he first arrived at the home? Oh, the, the first thing he wanted to do is inspect uh, the damage of my finger um, and try and figure out exactly what had happened, how it happened. And what did you tell Dr. Kipper about how your finger had been injured? Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? Say, we've right. discussed this several times. Let's go.
Mr. Depp, when Dr. Kipper was treating your finger, what did you tell him about how your finger became injured? Um, I told him, I told him that there was obviously, I mean, when you saw the damage in the house and the, and the blood everywhere, I mean, obviously there was serious damage done. Um, I, there would be no point in lying to the man. He'd been through it with me and, and, uh, Ms. Herb before I told him that she had, uh, thrown a bottle of, bottle of vodka and smashed my hair, smashed and cut my finger uh, off, the tip of my finger, just the, but a good chunk. I miss it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Depp, you heard Ms. Hurd testify um, about an alleged incident of abuse on your honeymoon. Do you remember that? I remember her testifying to that, yes. And when did you and Ms. Hurd go on your honeymoon together? I believe it, it, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of August, um, because I, ju I just finished the film. Maybe end of July, um, August. I, I'm not quite good on the exact date. Do you recall the year? It was 2015, I believe. And where did you and Miss Hurd go on your honeymoon? Um, we we um, took the uh, the Orient Express um, from Bangkok, Thailand to Singapore. And what happened while you and Miss Hurd were together on the Orient Express? Um, there, there, there were there were times when it was very agreeable, very nice. And then there were times when um, something, some, something had become dissatisfactory for her and she would uh, start the, the um, rant, the, the blooming of the of a fight w would would be on deck there and uh, uh, and and uh, at one at one point it didn't I mean I don't remember it lasting long at all I, I just remember that um, I I took a pretty good uh, shot to the. Um, to the face, to the eye, to somewhere up here. So I had a bit of a shiner. Um, but it, but but the it all went ended, and then everything got fine again. And we'd go to dinner, and it was all fine. Did Miss Hurd ever apologize to you for giving you the shiner? I don't. I don't recall. Can we please pull up? Plaintiff's Exhibit 162, which is already in evidence. Mr. Depp, do you recognize this photograph? I do. It was with the, the yes, the, the, um, the chef and the major d' and the staff were asking if they could take a photo with us, and they'd been very kind at giving us a and private dinner card. So where was this photograph taken? That was in the... Um, um, that looks like it's in the, yes, that's towards the back of the Orient Express, that's in the, uh, the, the, the back train com bar compartment, and just out back you could smoke on the, on the um, sort of caboose or whatever. And what, if any, injuries do you have in this photograph? I think the, um, the, the eye's a little bit bugged out. If you will, and it's how, yeah. How did that happen? Um, these things could happen very quickly if 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 you disagreed 
Objection, Your Honor, non-responsive. She just asked, how did that happen? I don't believe he was about to explain. Well, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. So, Mr. Depp, specifically, how did the injury in this photograph occur? Um, I'm sure it hit me. Is that better? Um, does this picture accurately reflect what you looked like on that date? I don't look at myself much, but it certainly looks like me with a black eye. Does this picture appear to have been photogra uh, photoshopped in any way? N no, I think no. I think it would be difficult to photograph or to uh, start getting into sort of digital processing with a number of people in the shot, especially in a wide shot. Could we please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1301? And this is a new one, Your Honor, so this is not in evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Depp, do you recognize what's reflected in this photograph? Uh, yes, this is the, the staff. Uh, it's the manager and uh, his staff at the um, um, Raffles Hotel in Singapore. Um, and before we left, they, uh, they asked if they could take a photograph with us. And when was this photograph taken? Um, well, that would have been, we were off the Orient Express. We stayed in Raffles, I believe, a couple of, couple of days, few days. And then from there, we flew to San Francisco. So this photograph was taken after the photograph we just looked at? That this photograph was taken after the photograph in the dining car of the train, yes. Uh, Your Honor, I move uh, Plaintiff's Exhibit 1301 into evidence. Right, any objection? Oh, happy honeymoon. Any, so any, 31st of October. Any, any objection? Uh, no objection, Your Honor. All right, 1301 is an evidence can be published to the jury. Mr. Depp, what, if any, injuries do you see on your face in this photograph? I see pretty much the same. I, I, I see that the, the area in here has been, uh, well, is, is uh, swollen and, uh, um, yeah, there's a bit of a shiner there. Thank you. We can take this down. Mr. Depp, do you recall Ms. Hurd testifying that she punched you um, in the staircase incident because she thought of Ms. Kate Moss in the stairs? Do, do I remember her saying that? Yes. Yes, I do. Three times. Yes, I do. Do you have any understanding as to what Ms. Hurd was referring to? I, yes, I do. And I, um, as, as Kate Moss, um, Kate testified, it was many, many years ago, um, and, and what, exactly what happened is what she said happened. I, uh, recall, I recall, um, Speaking with Ms. Hurd about an, uh, 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 that in, that very incident, um, because of the down, uh, downpouring of rain, because it was raining very heavily that day, that Kate slipped, uh, and I recalled the story to her. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Uh, may we approach Your Honor? Okay.
Please continue, Mr. Depp. What did you tell Ms. Hurd about the staircase, or Kate Moss? Uh, uh, I'll make it easy for Mr. Uh, Rotten Born. Um, Ms. Hurd uh, took the story and turned it into a very ugly incident, all in her mind. Um, there was never a moment where I pushed Kate down any set of stairs, yet she's spewed this three times before. Um, Objection, Your Honor. Ms. Hurd simply testified that she had heard a rumor, and that's uh, what's not a rumor? responsive to the question. Mr. Sir, hold on. Ms. Sorry. Objection. I'll overrule the objection. Ms. States the facts and evidence. I'll overrule the objection. Sorry, I'm, I was drawn by Mr. Rottenborn's um, voice. Certainly. What, what was you like? Was it? Um, so what, what specifically had you actually told Ms. Hurd about the incident with Ms. Moss and the stairs? V very simply that she had, we were in Jamaica. Um, I had left our bungalow um, about three minutes prior to her. I was standing outside and suddenly rain starts just coming down like it's, you know, a uh, uh, monsoon. And then I remember looking and seeing Kate coming out the door and there were three little wooden stairs and she slipped her legs went up and she landed directly on her coccyx and her, and her lower back. So, and she was obviously physically in pain uh, and she was hurt, she was crying. So I ran over and grabbed her to make, you know, to make sure she was all right. Uh, um, that's, that's it, that's the, that's all I ever, that, that's the whole story. But then, um, the rumor of it. I'd never heard a rumor of that um, before um, Miss Hurd uh, grabbed hold of it. It's like that, I'm sorry. Mr. Depp, uh, we heard testimony from Miss Hurd's sister, Whitney, during this trial. Do you remember that? Yes. And how would you describe your relationship with Whitney when you were in a relationship with Ms. Hurd? I, 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 I liked Whitney very much. Um, initially, I mean, when I first met her, I liked her very much um, and grew to love Whitney. Um, very much. Um, because I, I always, it, it seemed, Whitney, Amber's sister, Whitney, seemed to always get the, the, the sort of dirty end of the stick. And um, I, I felt bad for her for that because it wasn't new. It had been there for, for life. And that, was, that was, seemed pretty obvious. So I, 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 took, uh, I took to Whitney. Um, very, very quickly, very easily. She was, a, she was a very sweet kid. She was wonderful. What do you mean that Whitney got the dirty end of the stick? Um, it was a kind of a strange combination of loving sister, trusted sister and friend, um, and then lackey, and uh, then, you know, either the punching bag or the dartboard, or the recipient of, uh, of some rather demeaning and ugly um, words, or she would have wine thrown in her face. And who was the source of those? demeaning words and the wine that you just referenced. Well, that would be Amber Heard, her sister. And how do you know that? Well, I witnessed quite a lot of it. Um, the wine in the face uh, 
was something that happened in New York, which uh, I think that even made it into the papers. I believe that even made it into the papers. It was in an elevator. How did you first learn about that incident? Miss Surrey told me. In detail. What else did you observe of um, Miss Hurd and her sister Whitney's interactions during your relationship with Miss Hurd? They were just constantly up and down, but I, you know, I could, I could sense, I could feel that Whitney was trying to please her sister, trying to be up to snuff and um, it just seemed like she got shot down. Jackson, every Your time. Honor, it's gone beyond the scope of the question or uh, his oh. foundation for knowledge of that. Your Honor, I, I, I asked what he observed, you know, between them. I think this is responsive to that. In his testimony as to what Whitney felt is... I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. Did you ever see Miss Hurd physically attack Whitney? No, I've never seen any full-on blowouts, physical blowouts between them. Tons of verbal uh, blowouts. Objection beyond the scope? Overruled. Um, I've, I've certainly seen Miss Hurd grab Whitney. Um, um, Push her, push her around. Uh, there were a number, number. There were half a dozen times when uh, we, some of us, whoever, whoever was in the general vicinity, would have to leave. Um, this is at Orange when Whitney and Amber were living at Orange. Uh, Whitney and her boyfriend <coughs> at the time, Sean Krzyzewski, uh and uh, he. We actually, we had to leave the apartment and why, why wait in the car while they fought. And when you say fought, do you mean physical, physically or? Physical. And when you said Miss Hurd would push Whitney around, do you mean that to physically push her or metaphorically? Both. Um, you heard Whitney testify that she lived in Penthouse 4 at the Eastern Columbia building for a time, correct? That is correct, yes. Um, how did Whitney come to live in Penthouse 4? Um, my recollection, when Whitney first came to stay at the um, Eastern Columbia building in Penthouse 4 was she and her boyfriend, Sean, had... Um, broken up and uh, she needed a place to go and so Amber asked if she could stay in penthouse four and I I said well, of course she of course you know how long did Whitney live in penthouse four um, it was well over a year on and off did you ever ask Whitney to move out of Penthouse 4? No, I did not, no. Why did Whitney ultimately move out of Penthouse 4? Objection, foundation. It, it's his apartment, Your Honor. He was living there. Oh, overruled. Um, Whitney moved out of Penthouse 4 long before the um, marriage. And it was due to a, an argument that Ms. Hurd and Whitney had had, um, which had to do with um, Whitney working at the Art of Elysium with Jennifer Howell and those people. And stand uh, and we're asked her to leave.
you know. Where did Whitney live when she moved out of Penthouse 4? My understanding is she went to live with Jennifer Howell. Uh, Your Honor, I know you um, anticipated having a motion at noon. I... Uh, it, it, you can keep going. That's okay. Fine. We can... uh, how much longer in direct do you have? Um, I have a, a, a bit. Okay, that's okay. Uh, Mr. Dub, do you recall hearing testimony during Ms. Hurd's case um, from Mr. Mandel? Yes, I do. And, and who is that? Uh, Mr. Mandel is uh, my former business manager of 17 and a half years who at a certain point I um, uh, discovered had been um, embezzling quite a lot of money, so I had to uh, uh, take action against uh, him and uh, he and, and, and my lawyer of 17 and a half years as they were uh, in cahoots, as it were. And um, so, so, yes, Joel Mandel is, uh, and they, which was, they, they settled um, their case uh, with me. They made their settlement. Um, but yes, it was. It was the big. That was a very. Yeah, Joel Mandel is a a very bitter man who um, ended up with a lot of money that I worked hard for over the years. Do you recall Mr. Mandel testifying in this case that um, you do not spend? very much money on charity. That I don't, sorry? That you do not spend very much money on charity. Objection, Your Honor. You just want to approach. approach? Okay. Uh, Mr. Depp, just to remind you, my, my question was, what is your response to Mr. Mandel's testimony that you do not spend very much on charity? Uh, my response to that is Mr. Mandel is a very bitter man. And um, one thing about that me, myself, personally, that with regard to charity donations, um, sending money to a charity. Um, I, I prefer, I don't, I would rather that my name were not on it. I don't want the name to be the important thing or the thing that people talk about. So when I donate I char uh, money, uh, I donate without my name being involved because I because I don't see that that's important my name being there in terms of money now if if I if I am able to visit hospitals or if I'm able to um, meet with make-a-wish children um, I've held on to the relationships that I've held on to within the Make within the Make a Wish Foundation and the Children's Hospital and uh, various various other places. Um, oh, oh, then, my obviously, my name is involved. When we held premieres in Leicester Square um, for several films, uh, 
Charlie Objection, and the Chocolate Honor, Factory. Again, beyond the scope of his response to Mr. Mandel's testimony. I believe this is in response to Mr. Yeah. Mandel. I'll overrule the objection. So basically, w w when, it when it was a public, let's call it a donation or whatever, I would talk to the studio. I would talk to Disney. I would talk to Warner Brothers. I would talk to whoever the studio was uh, well before the premiere and make the premiere a benefit that would, once we did what we benefited, we did a benefit, a premiere for Great Ormond Street Hospital. We did a benefit, a couple of benefit premieres for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Um, I mean, if you can turn a premiere with that many thousands and thousands and thousands of people there into a benefit, um, it, it, it works and it helps, um, but it wasn't presented under my name, you know. It was Disney's doing this or Warner Brothers is doing this. I'm not looking for the um, pat on the back, as it were. If I can make it happen, great. But I don't need the pat on the back. I don't need the adulation. I don't need the attention. Did you hear Ms. Hurd testify that one of the charities she donated a portion of your divorce settlement to was the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles? Yes. What is your relationship with the CHLA? Objection, Your Honor. Irrelevant. And to the May we approach Your Honor? Um, Mr. Depp, what is your relationship with the CHLA? Um, I've had a relationship with the CHLA for probably 20 years or so. And um, what's just the nature of that relationship? Um, 
Well, since you, since you know, uh, sometimes there are Make a Wish kids who are in the hospital there, and that their wishes to objection, Your Honor. Yes. Your Honor, may we approach? Okay. Mr. Depp, I'd like to take you back to uh, exactly six years prior to this week, the week of May 21st through May 27th, 2016. Um, what happened at the beginning of that week? May uh, 21st. Uh, excuse me, May 20th. May 20th, um, this is, we're, we're talking 2016 here. Yes. Um, May 20th, um, the afternoon of May 20th, afternoon, evening, um, my, uh, my mom, um, uh, made her exit she um uh, she'd been fighting um, cancer numerous times and, and for many years and she she fought um, all the way to the end and um, so my mother passed away on the 20th of May um, I which does bring instant perspective into one's mind. I uh, spoke to Amber that night. I called her on the telephone, explained to her that my mom had passed, Betty Sue had passed, and that um, I thought that the best thing we could do was to um, that I file for divorce. Your Honor, what Mr. Depp told Ms. Heard. We can move on, Your okay. Honor. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Depp, what happened at the end of that week on May 27th, 2016? May 27th, my daughter's birthday. May 27th, um, I was not in Los Angeles. I was on the way to on tour, and uh, that was when uh, Miss Heard um, went for the restraining order. Um, and oh yeah, also that was the that was the day that uh, um, uh, Alice Alice through the Looking Glass, um, a film I'd done, was opening. Did Miss Heard know that you were out of town on May 27th? Yes. And how would she have known that? Well, I told her I was going on tour. I, I mean, it was, that was well established. How long were you going to be out of town on that tour? Two to three months. And did Miss Heard know how long you'd be out of town? I, I don't know if she knew exactly how long I'd be out of town, but it was a pretty extensive tour of Europe.
How did Ms. Hurd's actions on May 27th, 2016 affect you? Changed everything. Objection, Your Honor. Relevance oh, it didn't change everything? Sorry. Mr. Hurd, if you could wait till the objection, please. Yes, yes, I'm sorry. Relevance. 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 Your Honor, this is one of the key if you want dates. To Mr. Depp, what has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? I'm sorry? What has it been like for you to listen to Ms. Hurd's testimony at this trial? Objection relevance, Your Honor. Oh, overruled. Insane. It's, it's insane to hear heinous um, accusations of violence, sexual violence, that she's attributed to me, that she's accused me of. Um, I don't think anyone enjoys having to uh, split themselves open and tell the truth. But um, 
there are times when one just simply has to because it's gotten out of control. It horrible. Um, ridiculous, humiliating, ludicrous, painful, savage, un, unimaginably brutal, cruel, um, and all false. All false. Um, I wanted I, I, no human being is perfect, certainly not, none of us, but I have never in my life committed sexual battery physical abuse, all these outlandish, outrageous stories of me committing these things and living with it for six years and waiting to be able to bring the truth out. So this is not uh, easy for any of us. I know that. But um, uh, no matter what happens, I did get here and I did tell the truth and I have spoken up for what I've been carrying on my back reluctantly for six years. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Did you want to take lunch at this point? All right, just, okay. All right, let's do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take uh, lunch this time. Do not discuss this case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? Thank you. And don't break anything on your way out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.